Hello students. Today we will discuss about preservation of food products by using sugar. In the last classes we have discussed about um, preservation of fruit juices by using uh, uh, different techniques or different methods. So fruit beverages or either fermented or unfermented beverages they are all being uh, stored or preserved for a longer period of time um, by various methods like high temperature like pasteurization or sterilization or by using certain uh, chemical preservatives like uh, potassium metabisulfate or sodium benzoate or by using uh, what do you call sugar the sugar also uh, prevents the growth of microorganisms so makes uh, moisture unavailable to the microorganisms so thereby it prevents and even the fermentation so will help in the preservation of the food products uh, thereby so unfermented beverages are uh, stored or preserved for a longer period of time so in this class so we are going to discuss about the preservation by sugar so under this uh, we will be discussing about jams jellies and marmalade so what exactly is jam and how it is being prepared and what are the problems that you come across while preparing a jam basically these jams jellies and marmalades are the class of food products so which are preserved by using sugar so you use uh, sugar as a mode of preservation they use high concentration of sugar so that it prevents the growth of microorganisms so this process of preservation is carried out um, in the case of your jams and jellies is because of the presence of high amount of sugar you have different varieties of uh, uh, jams use different fruits uh, for making jam like your apple pineapple strawberry or uh, you can mix different kinds of uh, fruit so that you will get a mixed fruit jam and generally the jellies are prepared from the fruits which are rich in pectin like your guava uh, or uh, marmalade is prepared from only the uh, fruits like your citrus fruits like oranges so you prepare a, a marmalade so they these three are basically prepared with the high concentration of sugar in them that is 68 percent and then um, they will be preserved for a longer period of time so they will be differing in their uh, composition the matter that uh, the jam is uh, a substance wherein which there is no separation of pectin you don't separate the pectin the whole fruit is uh, crushed and, and then whole fruit is boiled with sugar and it is brought to some consistency and it is made into jam whereas in the case of uh, jelly the pectin is separated and to the pectin they add sugar and bring to a consistency of a jelly and in the case of marmalade it is a uh, uh, pectin is again separated and they are incorporated with shreds so these three are slightly different in terms of their composition so wherein uh, jelly and marmalade are differing in terms of um, marmalade being having uh, shreds of your um, peel that is uh, uh, peel of the uh, fruit citrus fruits is used like oranges peel is uh, made into fine thin shreds thin peels and then they are added uh, in the pectin extract which is boiled with a sugar so then you will get your marmalade in this slide you can make out clear cut difference between jam jelly and marmalade jam being opaque in nature and it is a complete fruit whereas the jelly is a fruit extract it's a pectin extract to which sugar is added that makes it uh, more of a transparent in nature unlike the jam and a marmalade is just like a jelly only thing is it has got added shreds of the peel jam is nothing but boiling of the fruit pulp you boil the fruit pulp with sugar so that the fruit tissues which are produced as a result of boiling so they are uh, held together the fruit tissues so they form a pulp so when there is a fruit that is intact which is not um, made into pieces or when it is not being boiled or made into pulp so those tissues will be made intact 
the pulp will be free flowing it won't be holding its tissues but once you add sugar to that the sugar helps in holding these tissues together thereby you will get a certain consistency so you boil the fruit pulp along with the sugar to certain consistency where in which these fruit tissues are held together with the help of the sugar so that will be aided or help uh, also with the help of addition of some acid to that so as we already discussed uh, there is a slight difference between this uh, jam and a jelly where in which uh, jam consists of a, a pulp a fruit pulp the entire fruit pulp and even the pieces are used whereas in the case of uh, your jelly is a clear fruit extract so we extract the clear fruit uh, bulb by uh, separating the pectin from the fruit pulp so and you cook it to a consistency of or when you get cooked along with the when the fruit pulp is cooked along with the sugar to a pss of around 68 percent so that becomes your jam in this flow chart you can see the preparation of jam the first step is selection of the fruit how a fruit is selected the fruit has to be firm and ripe when you hold it with your hands if you press it and then if it doesn't yield to a pressure but still the fruit is ripe so such fruits are suitable for preparation of the jam if the if the fruit is overripe or if the fruit is underripe if it is overripe it doesn't have much pectin in it it cannot hold the tissues together if it is uh, underripe it may not have sufficient sugar or sufficient uh, amount of uh, what do you call flavor in it to give particular flavor to the jam so you need to use uh, firm and ripe fruit for the selection of uh, for preparation of the jam so then once the fruit is uh, selected then you can go for washing and then followed by cutting into uh, slices so by removing the seeds skin or in the case just like in the case of your pineapple the core is been removed and then these uh, fruit pieces are uh, made into a pulp by using a blender or um, uh, any means you made into a pulp and add with required amount of sugar so you boil the pulp and the sugar to a consistency along with addition of citric acid and then it will set it will start to set so that can be judged based on uh, by using your bricks meter so you can use your bricks meter you can take a, a drop of it and test whether it has reached 68 degree bricks once it has reached means it is done so if you don't have don't worry you can do it with a sheet test uh, by using ladle you can lift a little bit amount of the uh, cooking substance that is jam and try to drop it from certain height when it is being dropped it will fall in the form of a sheet so if it is falling in the form of a sheet it means it is done if it is not falling so it has to cook for a certain period of time so then if you had if it is dropping in the form of a sheet it is done if you take it out and then now uh, before taking you out you can add a little bit of uh, amount of color to give good color good appearance and then it will improve the uh, attractiveness of the jam and it is bottled into the uh, containers bottles which are pre-sterilized and then they are sealed so then this uh, product this jam can be stored for a longer period of time even under ambient conditions preparation of the jam involves the following six major steps the first step is a fruit preparation so where you prepare the fruit to make into a pulp and then in the second step addition of requisite quantity of sugar and the third step you added additives additives like your acid color and even in, you can add flavor so to import a specific flavor of the fruit and the next step is bro boiling uh, to a consistency and which is judged by end point and then finally storage of the prepared product after selection of the 
firm ripe fruits and then followed by thorough washing of the fruits so removal of uh, arsenates or uh, pesticides in them and then you go to the next step that is the fruit preparation where you prepare the fruit pulp to add sugar for further boiling so for that you need to prepare the fruit each fruit is different from one another so some fruits are berries like your strawberries so which are uh, juicy in nature so the pulp is prepared by crushing between rollers or in the case of raspberries the core is removed by crushing and allow them to pass through the seeds so the cores and the seeds are removed uh, in the case of your berries and in the case of your plums peaches and apricots so these are basically hard in nature they are uh, softened by heating them with little quantity of water and then further they are containing they are having stones in them so these stones are removed by passing through wide mesh sieves so after removal of the stones then the pulp is softened and then the stones are removed then it is the pulp is easily extracted by using the pulper so that is how it is done in the case of plums peaches and apricots and in the case of pears so the pears are peeled and the core is removed and they are cut into small pieces before that is made into pulp and in the case of uh, mangoes so the peel is removed and the stones are separated and they are slices and the slices are allowed to pass through the pulper so some of the cases like you can easily get ready-made pulp so which is done by using a baby pulper or any, any pulper where the skin as well as the uh, nut is up separated and you will get a fine pulp and then the pineapples the pineapples they have a core in them so we need to remove the core as well as the peel and they are made into slices or or pieces small pieces so that you can make a coarse pulp so you need to prepare a coarse pulp in the case of pineapple and in the case of mixed fruit pulp fruit uh, jams you can add different types of fruits that are uh, desirable and then it can be mixed with the uh, desired concentration desired uh, quality of the different types of fruit pulps and use it to uh, for preparation of mixed fruit jams after preparing the fruit for addition of sugar uh, the fruits are prepared by different means in different fruits based on its nature whether it's a berry or whether it's a uh, nut fruit whether it is having core and made into a fine pulp or coarse pulp and then it need to be added with desired quantity of sugar so that sugar is based on the amount of pulp you have if you have 45 parts of the fruit pulp you need to add 55 parts of the sugar that's right you need 55 parts of the sugar for every 45 parts of the pulp that is being used so what happens if you if uh, use more sugar or less sugar it is going to spoil the jam consistency so final you should have uh, reducing sugars so the invert sugars should be around 30 to 50 percent the range of in the final product of the jam so to get this percentage of invert sugars that is reducing sugars reducing sugars means your glucose fructose uh, these type of sugars should be there ranging from 30 to 50 percent if this concentration wavers it is less than that the jam starts crystallizing as you can see in the picture so the sugar start crystallizing if the percentage of this reducing sugars is less than 30 percent what if if it is more than 50 percent the jam starts to become like a honey like mass so it forms a small crystals of glucose so if it is less than 30 percent it is a crystallized jam and if it is more than 50 percent it becomes a honey like mass so this excess sugar it will cause 
gummy and sticky substance because of higher TSS. So either case if it is less or if it is more the jam will be spoiled you won't get the desired consistency. So to get the desired consistency you need to add 55 parts of the sugar for every 45 parts of the pulp that you are going to use. Once the required quantity of um, sugar is added to the pulp and then you need to add acid. Uh, acid can be supplemented in the form of either citric acid or malic acid or tartaric acid. So this acid will help in proper setting of the jam. So you need to have a proper uh, set jam you need to add a, you need to have a proper proportion of uh, pectin that is your fruit pulp sugar and acid so these three need to be in certain proportion so that the jam what is going to get what you are going to get will be properly set so some fruits will be left deficient or they will be lacking in uh, acidic uh, content acid content in such fruits you can supplement the deficient acid by adding either lime juice or citric acid or any kind of uh, acid so that will help in maintaining the acidity before addition of sugar the pH of the juice and the pectin should be around 3.1 so make sure that pH is there before addition of the sugar and then later once the uh, jam is set so at the end of the boiling process you can add of colors and even flavors to get attractive color you can add uh, permitted colors food colors and to get uh, desired flavor or the flavor is lost some of the fruits when they are boiled uh, during the process of preparation of the jam the flavor is lost the lost flavor can be incorporated by adding flavors or permitted flavors which will give specific flavor to the jam so that is done just before packing or at the end of the cooking process. After pulping the fruit and then adding the sugar, the next step is boiling. So during the process of boiling, a series of changes occur that will help to set the jam. So in this process of boiling, the fruit is boiled and it is cooked along with the sugar. So when the fruit is being boiled, the pectin that is present in the fruit in the form of calcium pectate or magnesium pectate that is present in the cell walls is slowly liberated and it binds with the sugar and it sets even in the presence of acid it at a TSS of 68.5 degree bricks it starts settling. So during this process even there is a change that is called inversion of sugar. So that means non-reducing sugars like your sucrose so gets converted into reducing sugars like your glucose and fructose. So these changes will occur during the process of boiling. Boiling of the jam is carried out either in the open pan when you are carrying out in a home scale process. If you are carrying out in a cottage industry or a large scale industry boiling process is carried out in steam jacketed kettles where the source of heat is because of the steam steam helps in heating the fruit pulp liberating the fruit pectin as well as it causes the inversion of sugars but during the heating process at very high temperatures of boiling range it causes loss of uh, precious vitamins and even the flavor is lost but that can be prevented uh, by heating or by cooking or boiling in vacuum conditions. So under vacuum conditions the temperature can be reduced to 65 to 75 degrees Celsius. At a very low temperature itself jam can be formed. So under such conditions at a very low temperature jam can be formed retaining the nutrients and even the flavor. You are boiling the fruit pulp along with sugar and added citric acid. 
So during the process of boiling, the continuous froth and bubbles, they start appearing. I don't know when to stop this cooking process or boiling process. This can be done by using three different methods. So that includes your weight test, or the temperature test, or even the sheet test. It is the most reliable and mostly followed test for judging the end point of the jam, whether it is done or not, whether it is set or not. By checking the weight of the finished jam, you can judge whether the jam is set or not. So in case of uh, fruits which are having a high pectin, very good amount of pectin in them, you can judge based on the sugar that you have added. You have added, for example, 1 kg of sugar, the end product, the jam that is set, will be having a weight of around 1.5 times that of the sugar. That means 1.5 kilo of the end product. So that means if you add 1 kg of sugar, the end product which is finished must be 1.5 kg. So that is based on the weight. Whether a jam is set or not, it also can be judged based on the temperature. When the boiling of this mixture or the jam starts to boil at a temperature of 105 degrees Celsius, 105 degrees Celsius at the mean sea level. So that means it has reached a TSS of 68.5%. That means by checking the temperature of the jam. So if it has reached a temperature of 105 degrees Celsius, that means it has reached the required TSS and it is said to be done. So that particular temperature is said to have finished quantity of the jam. Another popular method of uh, judging the end point of jam is by taking a little amount of the boiling mixture, that is jam that is boiling by using a ladle or any kind of spoon and then dropping from certain height. If it drops out like a syrupy or a thread like that means it is not yet done. If it is dropping in the form of a sheet, in the form of flakes, that means the jam is done. That is an indication of end point of the jam. After judging the end point of the jam, the next step is to store the jam in the sterilized containers. So once the jam is ready, now if at all if you want to add any kind of color like artificial permitted colors or uh, any kind of flavor to the jam that can be added. And then after addition of these uh, additives, then the prepared jam can be transferred into the sterilized glass bottles. Most of the times the pulp is obtained from the pulp industries. These pulp industries add potassium metabisulfate as a preservative to preserve the pulp. So if such pulp is used for preparation of the jam, there is no need to add any further KMS. If a pulp is used which is not preserved by using potassium metabisulfate in such cases, KMS is added at the rate of uh, 40 ppm to preserve the juice so from unwanted spoilage that is caused by microorganisms to prevent the spoilage caused by the molds so once the bottling is done and the top surface of the bottle paraffin wax molten paraffin wax is poured on the surface and then it later it is allowed to set to prevent the growth of molds prepared jam is stored in the sterilized bottles and then is cooled and it is stored in a cool place and if it is not stored in a cool place the moisture from the surface of the jam is gets evaporated and this evaporation causes shrinkage of the jam so to prevent the shrinkage of the jam the prepared jam bottles need to be stored in a cool place while preparing jam you may encounter few problems during its production if reducing sugar percentage is not optimum it may lead to crystallization 
and if there is too much of TSS in it it may be uh, the jam may become sticky or gummy if there is low TSS or high pectin it may lead to the premature setting of the jam or if the prepared jam is stored under conditions which are not cool it causes surface evaporation and causes shrinkage and if they are exposed to certain microbes so it may cause even microbial spoilage first problem of uh, jam preparation is crystallization this is attributed to the improper percentage of invert sugar concentration if the invert sugar concentration is not optimum that is from 30 percent to 50 percent if it wavers either below or above it causes crystallization or it may cause honey like uh, consistency so if it is having less than 30 percent of invert sugars so it the jam develops crystals so as you can see in the picture it causes crystallization or even if the percentage of this invert sugars is more than 50 percent so this causes honey like mass so during formation due to the formation of very small crystals of glucose so that also causes a gummy and a honey like uh, texture so how to overcome this problem so this problem can be uh, overcome by adding a corn syrup or by adding glucose along with sugar sometimes the jam uh, becomes very sticky or gummy so this is due to the high TSS concentration at the end of the jam so this may be the problem may be arising as a result of the fruit what you are using if it is having high TSS initially and on top of that you add more amount of sugar in it and then it increases exorbitantly the TSS concentration so this causes high TSS uh, thereby it is uh, leading to sticky or gummy jam so this can be prevented by adding either pectin or by adding citric acid or both in other cases where even before the concentration of TSS is reaching 68.5 percentage the jam tend to set so that condition is called as premature setting so this jam sets before reaching a set 68.5 degree bricks so this is due to the low TSS percentage or high pectin content in the jam so this can be corrected either by adding more amount of sugar even after adding this sugar if it is not corrected so this can be corrected by adding sodium bicarbonate so this sodium bicarbonate helps to reduce the acidity and then prevents the premature setting of the jam so this can be corrected either by adding sugar to increase the TSS or to nullify the effect of the or reduce the effect of the acidity this sodium bicarbonate can be added when you don't store the prepared jam under cool conditions when you expose them to a very high temperatures so this causes the surface of the jam to be shrunk so due to the moisture evaporation from the surface of the prepared jam this leads to crinkling or shrinking or formation of some wrinkles on the surface of the jam so that's called as surface gaining or surface shrinkage so this can be prevented by storing the prepared jam in cool places another important challenging aspect during the preparation of jam is the microbial spoilage especially the ones that is caused by the molds and the yeast especially the molds as we already see in the suitable conditions for the growth of these molds are uh, uh, moisture condition uh, high moisture conditions more than 90 percent relative humidity and then uh, aerobic conditions so these two conditions are suitable for their growth so if you deplete these two conditions either by reducing the relative humidity to less than 90 percent maybe 80 percent it will prevent the growth of these molds or uh, even creating 
conditions which are free from air uh, by placing a wax disc on the top of the um, prepared jam bottles so thereby you can prevent the growth of molds even they can also be prevented by adding potassium metabasulfate as we have already seen how a chemical preservative like this by the production of sulfur dioxide as an effective control over even the mold spores also so thereby so by reducing the moisture level or relative humidity less than 80 percent or by depleting the air or making the anaerobic conditions or uh, devoid of air or even by using the sulfur dioxide we can prevent the growth of this molds and as such um, yes does not have much impact on this uh, and jams because these are highly concentrated in sugars um, so in such conditions yeast cannot prevail or cannot grow in such conditions